Greetings. There's a lot going on in Chapter 10, Property Crime. Occasional, conventional, and professional. So let's go ahead and, and take a look at some of these areas. But really, the interesting feature is that uh, you could write an entire book about any one of these crimes. And there are books about uh, these uh, specific crimes, whether it's a pyramid scheme, religious con, vandalism, motor vehicle theft, check forgery, um, theft from um, retail or um, vandalism. Uh, there's really um, a huge amount of um, information and, and research out there. What I'd like you to do, though, is to think about um, how the theories apply to um, these types of crimes, these property crimes. Uh, basically, and your author talks about the um, basic offense of theft or larceny being defined as um, taking of property without the owner's consent. And um, as your author clearly points out, there's just a broad range of property crimes, and he does an excellent job uh, discussing uh, many of these. He also points out that there's a continuum of um, those that engage in property crimes from the amateur all the way to the career criminal. For example, occasional property crimes and criminals uh, are discussed in, in your textbook, and the occasional property criminal usually doesn't have a criminal history, and they also don't have the specialized knowledge that uh, the professional criminals have. Uh, usually um, the crime is not going to be the way they make their living, and, and some of the crimes in this area of occasional property criminals would be, for example, shoplifting, vandalism, uh, check forgery. And um, your author goes into more detail about some of these crimes. For example, shoplifting and talks about different types such as the boosters or the professional shoplifters or the shadow professionals who supplement their uh, incomes by engaging in theft and uh, the snitches who are the amateur uh, shoplifters. And um, a lot of times shoplifting involves uh, stealing small, inexpensive items that one may want to use. And, and usually people don't think they're going to get caught. One of the interesting features about um, this type of crime is that some people get a great deal of excitement from, um, from stealing from stores. Uh, I, you can do a YouTube search of, um, uh, you know, for example, sir, you know, theft and surveillance cameras in retail establishments. Um, I, I did a YouTube search and literally found a whole bunch of uh, surveillance videos and also um, uh, theft um, videos uh, from the surveillance of not only the actual act, but also of the um, individual or individuals getting caught and the interactions that seem to uh, take place. For some reason, the ones that really came up um, were Walmart theft seems, and that might simply be because Walmart's so huge and is all over the place that you'd expect with such a wide um, number, you know, uh, uh, such a huge uh, number of stores and such a huge inventory spread out throughout uh, the United States that you would, um, uh, you know, expect to to see that. Also, um, there there was a couple that came up right away from Victoria's Secret, which I found kind of strange because I think they just sell underwear. And so, whatever. But um, my understanding is that it's very expensive stuff. So um, that's the you know interesting thing too, that some may actually steal these items and then resell it. Well, in the Walmart cases, um, I saw things that were taken such as one individual, <laughs> He took about four or five big, uh, you know, you know, two foot uh, rack of ribs and a couple of T-bone steaks, and somehow uh, was able to put that into his uh, sweatpants. And then another person managed to take about 
30 or so CDs. And, and so it's very interesting to watch. And then you think about what is it, you know, that attracts people to um, theft? What, what are the primary motivating factors? Also, your author discusses vandalism, which is the willful destruction of property without consent, such as wanton uh, vandalism, sense, which is senseless uh, destruction, and the most common type. Often these are uh, teenagers that are goofing around, or as your author points out, raising hell, and they don't really consider themselves criminal uh, in, in, in that sense, since they're just goofing around, playing, or not really harming anyone, and they often use those neutralization, uh, you, you know, uh, those rationalizations we talked about earlier. There's predatory vandalism where uh, uh, there's destructive um, acts, for example, to destroy, uh, to um, uh, obtain content, such as stealing from uh, vending machines, ATM machines, uh, I don't even know if we have cigarette machines anymore, but I can remember back when I was a youngster, you would see people trying to steal cigarettes out of um, these cigarette machines uh, by breaking the glass or, or trying to put a uh, uh, their hand or a coat hanger up there to grab a couple packs. And then vindictive vandalism, which is um, the destruction of, of, of um, property basically based on, on hatred. Uh, so that kind of gets into the area uh, focusing more on what might be conceptualized as, as hate crimes. Also, we see graffiti as a type of vandalism in some different types, such as gang graffiti, tagger graffiti, conventional graffiti, and ideological graffiti. And um, you can see graffiti um, all over the place, really, and then trying to... Um, uh, you know, from criminological and a sociological perspective, I would uh, recommend trying to understand the meaning. And sometimes you'll see simply see uh, symbols, and what, uh, and then you try to interpret what what that means. Also, um, motor vehicle theft is is discussed, and your author talks about joyriding, short term transportation, long term transportation, and profit motivated. And then also uh, forgery, for example, check forgery, and also fraud, which is the conversion or obtaining of money or property under false pretenses. Uh, fraud probably is very, very common. And um, other types of crimes are also uh, discussed related to um, these uh, occasional property crimes. Now, conventional property crimes are described by your author as um, criminals who commit the crimes of larceny or theft and burglary on a um, fairly persistent basis. So these are kind of semi-professionals. Usually um, uh, they continue their behavior into their uh, mid-20s or so and um, are more likely to risk being arrested because they really lack uh, the skills. And um, they're really differentiated from the um, occasional property criminals because they're, they identify with um, the criminal world. And then your author talks about uh, burglary, which is the unlawful entry in order to um, uh, the unlawful entry, the unlawful entry of a structure in order to commit a felony or theft. And your author talks about the professionals who are highly skilled and, and really know what they're doing and, and, and uh, have a plan uh, when they um, uh, break and enter. And then known burglars are less sophisticated and are known to police. And, and sometimes police officers will tell you about how uh, they've arrested you, you know someone several times for burglary and then they also know how they operate and they um, uh, are not surprised when they catch them again and again. Also young burglars working toward becoming professional burglars, and then juvenile burglars who um, uh, are, are often um, trying to, uh, you, you know, uh, burglarize based on just chance or, or some kind of um, special occasion. And so there's some more discussion of conventional property crimes such as uh, fencing operations, sting operations, and so on.
And then one odd discussion uh, focuses on arson, which is the willful or attempted malicious burning of a structural structure, vehicle, aircraft, or property of another. And then they talk about different types of of arsons, uh, for example, arson cases such as profit motivated, uh, where someone may um, uh, burn something, uh, you know, a business or a automobile to collect in insurance. Then revenge arson, uh, which would be getting back at someone. Vandalism arson, uh, which is used to express hatred toward another group, which again falls kind of in that um, that uh, vandalism we talked about before that that moves into the area or could move into the area of, of hate crimes and then concealment crime concealment arson is where uh, there is um, a fire that um, is, is, is set to try to destroy evidence uh, you know for example um, I know of a case where um, this guy was killed and um, and he was killed by being shot in the head and then the perpetrator went ahead and and um, and poured gasoline all over his body and lit it, trying to um, uh, destroy the evidence of, of a homicide through um, uh, you, you know uh, a shot to the head. And then there's also sabotage, arson, and you see this sometimes in riots and other types of civil disturbances, and then excitement arson, which is carried out by what your, how your author describes pyromaniacs, or people who have a fascination with setting and observing fires. And, and sometimes there's a sexual component to um, uh, the pyromania and setting of, of fires, sexual arousal component, that is. And your author does a really nice job of looking at the criminal careers of occasional and conventional um, property uh, criminals. And, and so you can look at really the differences there of the occasional and conventional. And then your author moves in to discuss professional criminals or those who earn a large part of their income through criminal activities where crime may be um, their sole livelihood and they basically have a criminal career and usually are highly skilled at what they do. They may also be well known in the criminal uh, world for their um, skills and, and achieve a, uh, uh, a name or recognition or a high status. And, and of course, they're often uh, successful uh, at, a, at, at getting caught. And so your um, author talks about professional criminals engaging in different um, uh, crimes such as uh, different types of scams like confidence games, uh, badger games, bank, bank examiners, uh, scam and um, other types of, of cons. Also discussed here are um, different types of cons such as identity theft, Ponzi schemes, pyramid schemes, and religious cons. And um, identity theft is a whole nother subject in itself really, but especially now we see with um, uh, hacking and stealing uh, personal information and um, also a lot of other technological devices used to um, record what someone's uh, typing in on a computer or you know for example credit card readers that might be or, or card readers bank card readers or credit card readers which might be installed in uh, a bank ATM machine or a gas station uh, pump uh, I and, and and I might tell you about a few cases as if we have time and I wrap this up here without going too long. And your author talks about different professional criminals, booster, cannon, professional burglars, professional fence, uh, paper hangers, professional robbers. A lot of that just refers to what they actually do, what types of crimes they they um, they commit. One of the thing um, that I'd like to point out is that theory is extremely relevant and your author discusses several theories uh, for example how routine activities theory may be useful to um, look at uh, who might be criminals who might be likely targets and where there's a lack of guardianship also um, uh, 
there's discussion of developmental life course theories and anime theory and also differential association theory, which looks at the whole idea that people learn how to become uh, good uh, criminals by hanging out with other criminals, being taught, being shown how to commit the crimes, understanding uh, the um, techniques that work best, also uh, gaining um, access to that knowledge and the rationalizations and the support system. So that all falls under differential association uh, theory. Okay, uh, if you think about it, there's just so many different uh, property type crimes that occur. I can think just um, in, in my own community, uh, thinking about some recently that that, that come to mind. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll, 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 I'll save this for a different uh, presentation because uh, the doorbell's ringing. So I'll get back to you all in a few. Thank you.